ChatGPT has a brand new way for making images. I've been using it all day. I have 10 examples I wanna show you, 10 use cases. This is called 4.0 image generation. So it's a native way for ChatGPT to make images. It's no longer using Dolly. So I've been using Dolly for a long time. Dolly 1, Dolly 2, Dolly 3. Those are now removed from ChatGPT. And I wanna show you this new way for making images, which is a massive, massive improvement from the old way. Now this is available to all the paid versions like the Plus, the Pro, the Teams version. It is not yet available in the free account though. Okay, let me start showing you some examples and some use cases. The very first use case is making a product mockup right here. So here's the prompt that I use and I'm not gonna read through the prompt, but I gave this prompt exactly what text I want exactly where I want the text, the details of the box over here, and all kinds of different ways I want the colors to look. And look at the details of this thing. Here's exactly how I spell chocolate in the prompt that I gave it. And he followed every single ounce of that prompt perfectly to a T. The next example was creating a mockup for a website, the entire banner. So I wanted to create one for a resort that is trying to get people to book a vacation. And I gave it all the information here for the menu that I want. I told it I want center text that says this, everything about the website. Okay, look at the details of this thing. And here's the really cool part, let me go back. I got this in square because I didn't tell it the size. So I followed that up and I asked it to create this in 16 by nine format for me. And it just kind of stretched it out. Every time you click on one of these, Right down here, you could ask it for a revision or to remove something or to replace something. And it will go ahead and do that. So if I just wanted the background and all this removed, I could do that. If I wanted to change the text right here, I could go ahead and give it a prompt right down here to do that. Okay, for this next use case, they actually created a very realistic looking photo with a lot of text. Okay, so if you need something with a lot of text, which a couple of them I showed you with a little bit of text, but this example they had, they gave a ton of text here and described this whiteboard. And this is the image they got out of that. Reflecting the Bay Bridge here in San Francisco. And the text was exactly the way they had in the prompt. But a lot of times I need to test these out on my own. And here's the version that I got. So the person is in a little bit of a different spot, but it did not say that in the prompt, but it got all the text right here and you could see the Bay Bridge here in the reflection of the person taking the picture. Now, let me show you how far this has come. So we had this prompt book here for Dolly 3, and these are different prompts that we had that generated these images. So I took this exact same prompt from Dolly 3, which the image generation platform we had literally two days ago inside of ChatGPT was Dolly 3. That's now removed and replaced with this native chat GPT image generator. And this is the prompt I took. So here, let me zoom in. This is what this gave us, this exact prompt with Dolly 3. And this is what we got inside of chat GPT with 4.0 image generation. Here's the next one I had. This is a white photo inside of a grand library, but Dolly always made things look a little bit unrealistic, right? It didn't look like a photograph. It looked more like an illustration, right? But look at this one. Now this is so much more photorealistic compared to what we were getting with Dolly 3. Okay, I tried it with this one from Dolly 3 prompt book. This was a close up photograph of a vibrant butterfly and more details about the flower. So this is Dolly 3 here, and this is the new image generator inside of ChatGPT. I mean, this is clearly a world apart. Now Dolly was not at all good with making any type of portraits or any type of human faces. So this one right here, a close-up photograph of a young athlete. I mean, there's all kinds of issues. It's much better illustration than any type of a realistic photo. But I was doing, this is a photography prompt book, and this is the best I was getting out of this one. Okay, so yeah, this is what we got now. This is what we had before. It's, I mean, it's not really comparable. I'll just show you one more example. Here's a vintage portrait of a person where I said full-length portrait. It didn't quite even follow the prompt that was over here in Dolly. And here's what we got. And it follows the prompt a lot closer. It looks a lot more authentic as a vintage photo. Okay, now that I've compared it with Dolly 3, let me show you some more practical use cases. Here, I make a lot of YouTube thumbnails, obviously. So I wanted to turn this into a YouTube thumbnail. I said, make a YouTube thumbnail of this person, cut them out of the background, put a techie and blurry background instead 
and have him hold a glowing open AI logo. Okay, so that's me. That's the prompt that he followed almost exactly, but I don't look quite like me. I mean, it's in the same world, but that's clearly not me, right? So then I said, well, no, make it exactly the same person. Well, that's a different person. So it was pretty close, but you could tell it's not quite me yet. So I think for thumbnail generation, it's not quite there yet, but I tried to turn myself into a wizard. I said, well, make me a wizard with a wizard hat and a robe and a magical expression. I wanted to see how you kind of thought about that if I said magical. Now, it's more cartoony looking and it's still not quite me, but it's getting a little bit closer when it looks a little bit more not like a photograph. On this one, I said replace all the logos with the top seven AI company logos. So now this is a little bit more than just image generation. It has to go find logos, figure out what the top seven are. And it did a pretty good job. It created eight logos, but you could see Anthropic, OpenAI, Google, this hugging face, mid journey, right? It, it got few. I don't know what couple of these are actually, but it kept everything else the same. Again, I don't look exactly like myself. It's in the ballpark of myself, but not quite right. But I said, hey, you cropped it. Sometimes it crops the left side. It did not fix it in that case. And it kind of made it a little bit worse. It's pretty close though, to actually be able to generate entire YouTube thumbnails the fact that it could cut someone in the background, generate a new background, find logos, get the text right. That is a huge leap. Now, the next use case is coming up with infographics because it's so good at text. I asked ChatGPT to create a prompt for me and I kind of described what I was looking for. I was looking for an infographic to show evolution of video games. And first, ChatGPT gave me this prompt where it put these video games, including some stuff that's coming out later, next gen, cloud console, which is a concept. So some real ones, some concept ones. Now look at the details of this thing, the amount of text that he had to get right. He got almost all these right, by the way. I think there was a little bit more to this timeline, but to fit it here, it looked like he started from the beginning and took us all the way to this concept next gen console. But I mean, he even got the shapes of these things. Like, look at the Nintendo right here. Now, the next prompt I tried was to create a meme. So I asked ChatGPT to make one up for me. It created this prompt for me. And the first time around, it cropped it. So you couldn't quite get it. And I said, hey, you cropped this. I just clicked here. I said, hey, you cropped this. Give me the text without cropping it. And he actually fixed it for me. It kind of stretched it out. So the text fits perfectly right. And it's ready to post. Literally, I could click here, download it, download it to my computer and upload to social from there. Now the next use case is changing the style and look how well this did. I gave it this thumbnail. I said, turn the person on the left to a cartoon, but keep everything else exactly the same. And look at this. It kept things exactly the same. It kept the background, even kept a little bit of that open AI logo here that I had, but it turned me into a cartoon. That's incredible. Now the next one is for creating graphic mockups. I actually wanted to see if you could mimic something famous like the cover of Time Magazine. So I said, create a high-end Time Magazine cover featuring a confident individual. And in the prompt, I said, photos to be inserted, and I forgot to insert it. I'll show you something interesting happened, looking directly with a visionary expression. And then I said, surround that person with the logos of the top AI companies. This is what ChatGPT just chose for me when I was crafting the prompt. And then here is the exact text I wanted. Okay, let me scroll down. Okay, look how well it copied that prompt here. It's an exact Time Magazine cover. It put the logos here, surrounded the individual that I asked for. It put the right text over here, and it put a person right over here, which I didn't actually intend this to be me. I was gonna put someone else here, but it actually looks a lot like me. So I don't know how it figured that out, because. I did not include any photos. It just said that placeholder said something will be inserted. It did not do that, but that looks a lot like me. So I don't know exactly what happened there. And then I was like, all right, well, let me try Let me give it this picture and say, put this person, but have them crossing their arm. Okay. Everything is the same. Looks the same surrounding me, but it did not get my face right. I guess it kind of looked like me, but again, different person 
He did follow the crossing the arm part of the prompt and he got the rest of it right too. So, and there were a couple of limitations that I wanted to point out that I noticed. So Dolly 3 actually got this one right back in the day, create a white photograph of a person standing in front of a bright sunlight and using that to kind of create that warm glow around them. Well, every time I tried this for some reason, the sun goes through the person. So that's not the way that should look. So there was a couple of limitations I came across. Very rarely though, did it do something like this where it wasn't following my prompt. The other limitation was from time to time, it would crop things. And the fact that it just couldn't get my face exactly right, which for my use case of creating YouTube thumbnails, that limitation is big enough that it kind of takes that out of the equation. I still will have to do it the old fashioned way of using Photoshop, but it's getting a lot closer now. And if you're trying this out for yourself inside of your ChatGPT account, this is a lot slower than Dolly used to be. It's a lot slower than any image generation platform. I use Recraft, I use Midjourney. Those are a lot faster. So maybe that's just related to the fact that this came out about 24 hours ago and I've been pretty much using it all day. And I'm inside of my pro account. It's even a little bit slower inside of my team's account. So you do have to be patient with it. That's pretty much most of the day here. That's about all I was able to generate so far, but hopefully that does speed up. Now, as soon as I get more time with this, I'll update our prompt book and I'll make some updated videos about how you should prompt this new model here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.